All right, welcome back to this tutorial series on IPLD. In this video, we're going to be working with the IPLD pathing tools to explore the IPLD IO website in the command line. This is possible because the IPLD website is hosted on IPFS thanks to a service called Fleek, which can display a static website whose code is hosted on GitHub. And we will be using the command line today. And so if you're not comfortable with using it, then just come along for the ride. Uh, and when you have time, I highly recommend you go through the IPFS and IPLD modules on our site at curriculum.pl-launchpad.io. First thing we're going to do is to install the Golang implementation of IPFS on our local computer. And if we haven't already, we will head over to docs.ipfs.tech slash install slash command line. We'll scroll down to find our operating system. I am using WSL2 on Windows, running Ubuntu 20, so the Linux commands will work for me. Now we can open up our command line, can copy and paste the first command to download the Linux binary. Double check if we have it, perfect. We need to unzip the binary. Now we need to CD into the Cubo folder that was just created. Now we can run the install command. Now we can test to see if everything was installed correctly. Perfect. Now, the last thing we would need to do is initialize our IPFS node on our computer. This will give us our PID so that we can be uniquely identified on the IPFS network. The next command we will need is called JQ, which is a command line tool to format JSON in a way that is easier for us to see. So we will head over to steadolin dot github dot io dash jq slash downloads. Here we can see that jq is available on Linux, Mac, and Windows. Mac is as easy as doing brew install jq. And for Linux, which I will run as well, I can run sudo apt install jq. As I mentioned earlier, this website is hosted on IPFS. So that means that this website has a root CID, which we can find. So to do that, we first need to start up our IPFS node by typing out IPFS daemon. Perfect. And then continue will open up a new tab or a new terminal. After which we will type IPFS resolve dash IPNS dash IPLD dot IO. And as you can see, here is the root CID for the IPLD IO website. Now what this will allow us to do is look at the Merkle DAG within our command line using the IPLD API. To do that, we will type out IPFS DAG get the root CID. And then we're going to use it pipe and pipe it to JQ. So we can see here a couple things. First is that JQ nicely formatted the JSON for us, allowing us to see clearly the IPLD native codec of the DAG. We can see that each Merkle DAG and IPLD will have a data field and a links field where the data field will hold the actual bytes of a block and a link will hold the named hashes for the children block. And so you might ask, well, how does Fleek know how to display this as a website instead of just hosting a directory? Um, well, that is due to the fact that Fleek runs its own IPFS node. Uh, and with that, IPFS will look in a directory to find a file called index.html 
And so if we are to just scroll down a little, a little bit here, we would see that that file does in fact exist in the root directory. And now that IPFS knows that the file exists, it pulls in the raw bytes and displays it in the browser. And we can do this similar thing too by typing out IPFS dag get, and then we'll use the same CID and then we'll do dash index.html. And here we'll pipe it to JQ again. And so what we are seeing here are the raw bytes of the index.html file. Uh, this is just encoded in base64. And I will show you how to get the decoded version of this. But first, we need to understand the difference between IPFS pathing and IPLD pathing. Currently, we are using IPFS pathing to access the raw bytes of a file. Uh, and we can use this to dive deeper into a DAG, uh, but I don't know what are any of the children blocks to this node, uh, but I can find out by looking at the links field. So we can see here that there are no links uh, in the links field, meaning there are no uh, children blocks, meaning this is a leaf block in the DAG. But if we go back to the root node, we can see it has children nodes in the links field and we can access any block like a normal file system by just typing the name of the link in the path. So for example, I can go into the docs name, see the children for the docs block. We have advanced data layouts, codex, data model, and we can go even further by going into codex and see so we got a little bit further into the DAG and this is neat because we have in essence navigated to this page in the docs site but not only that we have navigated a couple directories into the IPFS equivalent of this IPLD repo. I could go even further to find out what's inside known by doing, by adding that to the path. You can see here that these files in here in this subdirectory are equivalent to the blocks that we have in our Merkle DAG. So as I mentioned, this is an example of IPFS pathing, uh, but we want to move away from this to use IPLD pathing in this tutorial. Uh, the reason for this is because IPLD is a modular component uh, and can be used away from IPFS to be used with any other block storage or content address system. For that to happen, IPLD needs to know of the data field and the links field built into a native IPLD codec like DAGPB, which is shown here. So for example, to get back to the index.html file in the root directory, we can type out IPFS dag get dash IPLD dash the root CID dash links dash seven. So you can see here, we got back just the block that contains the index.html file. And so the next step will be to dive into the index.html file to look at the raw bytes. We would do links.slash.7 slash ash. Now, here's where we can decode this using IPLD pathing uh, and IPLD options to get the look at the raw data. We will do that by getting back, going back to our original command um, and adding in dash dash output dash codec equals raw. But before we can press enter, we need to include the data field here at the end so that the option works properly. And boom, we can see that we got back the raw data of the index.html block. The reason why I used seven in this command here was because according to the IPLD DAG, the index.html file is the seventh link down in the root directory. So we can I we can see that by going to the root directory, typing this to JQ. Let's get rid of the raw option 
because it will not work in this scenario. And we can count from the top down till we find index.html. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I said eight, but it's actually the seventh one down because IPLD counts start from zero. So as you have noticed, with the use of the IPLD name at the beginning of the path and the use of the IPFS dag get uh, commands, it lets our IPFS node know how to interpret the links, data, and the hash fields uh, to traverse a path in a Merkle DAG. And now with this, you have learned the basics of IPLD pathing. I will leave you with the exercise of accessing deeper blocks in the graph with the IPLD pathing options we just learned. Uh, one handy tool will be the DAG Explorer you can find built into the IPFS desktop app to navigate a DAG in a neat user interface. So if I take this CID for the root CID of our website, we hit inspect. We could also, it'll take us down to this tab and we can see here a neat representation of the DAG itself. If we click into any one of these links, say the docs link, for example, it'll show us the exact same thing we found on our uh, command line, uh, showing the next subsequent links to this block. And so if you want to learn the different ways to do this exercise, the answer will be in the write-up of this tutorial, which you can find at curriculum.pl-launchpad.io. Thank you.